What is up my Autodesk community? It's the Revit Guru here, aka Revit Ryan, with some more tips and tricks for your everyday uses in Revit. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to utilize user keynotes. I'm gonna be showing you really the basics of user keynotes. I'm gonna be showing you how to use user keynotes with a TXT file as well as create a user keynote legend and place it on your sheet. So go ahead, hit that subscribe, hit that thumbs up, hit that bell for more Revit tips and let me show you guys how to use these user keynotes. Okay guys, I already have a title block here as well as a floor plan placed and some equipment. I will go into further detail on how to create all these, but for this one, I just want to show you guys how to create a user keynote legend and insert user keynotes. So first what you want to do is open notepad. And what I like to do is just type, you know, one through five here, maybe one through 10. And then you're going to want to save this in an accessible place. So let me just type a uh, one, two, three, four, five here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and just place some notes that I commonly use. I'm just going to make up some notes here for this tutorial. But if you like, you know, place a few commonly used notes that you know you use for every project. But for the tutorial, I'm just going to use some random notes here. Put Revit 2. Here we go. Put another note here. And again, these will be commonly used notes. Or, And it doesn't matter what we write here. We can um, go come back and edit it. And I will show how to do that later. But... I'm just getting some text in here to show you guys as it appears. So go ahead and um, save this somewhere on your central file, somewhere really easily accessible. I like to save it in my backgrounds folder of my project. So I'm just going to save it here. Okay, so um, now we have, we save this in a notepad and we're going to come back to our project. Okay, the next step I like to take is uh, creating a keynote legend. So what you want to do is you want to come over here to legends on the pro project browser. You want to right click and you want to come down to new keynote legend. Here you go. And this will be the title of your uh, legend here. And um, here's some settings. You know, you can kind of manipulate these. I'll go into further detail about keynote legends in another tutorial. <clears throat> but personally, you know, I don't like too many grid lines. And this is just different properties of your... Uh, of your legend of how it appears itself and how it's going to filter but this is a really important step if you want it filtered by sheet meaning you want um, new keynotes to refresh on every sheet you have to make sure that that check bar check box is clicked so I'm, I've clicked filter by sheet I'm just gonna hit OK we're gonna come into our actual legend here and again I'll go into further detail about that later in another tutorial so I want to come back to my sheet We've created our legend. It's over here in our project browser. I'm going to go ahead and place it on my sheet here on my title block. Okay, and there, there it is. Okay, so that's our keynote legend. And that's where all of our keynotes are going to populate. Okay, so now we've placed our legend. Next thing we want to do is um, remember that TXT file we created? Yeah, this one right here. We want to go ahead and load this into our project now. So I'm going to come up to my ribbon here. And I'm going to be looking for the annotate tab, not the manage, annotate tab. There we go. And I want to come over to keynotes and I want to come down to keynote settings. And this is important to remember because this is, we're going to, this is where we're going to reload our keynotes every time. So the first time we open it, we want to browse and insert our actual keynotes TXT file that we just created. So this is the one we just created. I saved it in my backgrounds folder remember okay <clears throat> now it's important to note that this may be checked by keynote the first time you insert it and remember how we did filter by sheet we want to do the same thing here on our keynote settings so it's important to make sure that those are checked and you might see your keynotes pop popping up funny make sure you come back and, and check those uh, check marks if they start populating funny on your sheets okay so now we've loaded in our txt file that we just created now what i want to do is i want to go in here and i want to start placing some keynotes now in brand new projects there are no keynotes loaded but i know that um autodesk comes with a variety of actual tags for you guys to use so let's see what we got here what we want to do is we want to go down here this is actually going to let us place keynotes up here at keynotes under the annotate and so see how there's not one loaded yet 
Now, you can go into their Imperial, like I was saying, and go into their annotations. And let's see, I believe they have a Keynote one in here. So let's let's look down here. They do. See, they do have a generic Keynote one here. So you guys can load that one if you guys don't have one created. And you can kind of open it and manipulate it as you'd like to. And I'll make some more tutorials on how to do that. But for now, I'm just going to show you the one I have loaded. And it, <clears throat> I've just gone in and basically kind of manipulated it and made it round. And because some of the generic ones that it comes with aren't, aren't the best to use. But again, I'll go over that later. So this is my keynote that I, I have loaded. And now as you can see the thing, different things highlighting, I can, I can actually place this keynote on anything I want to now. So let's just go ahead and start placing keynotes. And as I place these keynotes, you're going to see the ones that we saved in that TXT file populate. Boom, there they go. So there's my keynotes. So as you can see, they match the ones exactly that are in my TXT file. And those are going to start populating once I start placing them up in the right hand side. So let's go ahead and choose one of these notes we want to place. Okay. Boom. And, the, and it's going to automatically start numbering as well. And we can connect to background elements. We can connect to our equipment, you know, and we can connect to pretty much anything except, uh, I believe, uh, lines. So annotation lines, I don't think we can connect to those. But I'm just going to play some random keynotes and show you guys how these work here. So as you can see, they're populating themselves and they're numbering themselves as I place them. So as you can see, the user keynotes, as we place them, they did populate up in the legend that we placed earlier. And if I click on the legend, I can manipulate its size here and I can break it in half. But I can, I'll go into further detail again in a further tutorial about legends and stuff. So, you know, I really try and utilize user keynotes as much as possible. It's really helpful when you have to place a bunch of keynotes because as you can see, as we click on the keynotes and we get rid of them, they're going to populate or change the number, you know, as I get rid of them automatically on the sheet by themselves. So see, as I'm getting rid of those keynotes, they, they get rid of them on the legend there as well. And what's really awesome about this, guys, is say I've misspelled or misplace a keynote, or I need to rename a keynote, or do something, all we got to do is go back to that original TXT file. And I should have mentioned this earlier, what's really important before we place that first keynote, is to make sure you hit a tab. Make sure you hit a tab after that number. So otherwise, you're going to see the number populate in your keynote itself. And we can organize these, key, we can get crazy and organize these keynote TXT files really well. But as you can see here, guys, I was just renaming some notes. Like I said, what if I maybe I misspelled or misplaced a note or I need to make a spelling correction or just change a note completely. I just go, I save over that original TXT file. I go back to keynote settings here and all I do is just reload. Super simple, guys. So I just went back to my original TXT file. I saved over that background file and then... I just reloaded it and as you can see look it just populates here in my original keynote legend should match here yeah exactly and make sure again we have that tab after that first letter in the txt file so I'm just gonna add some more notes here just to show you guys how they populate maybe add a couple letters here again save over that that txt that we saved in the backgrounds folder yes Come back in here, keynote, keynote settings, reload, boom. There you go. There you go, guys. There it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill out some more notes here. And you guys can add as many notes as you would like. Just I have to reiterate, make sure you hit that tab after every number. And if you need to go past five, just keep labeling. Go ahead and go up all the way up to a million if you like. Just make sure you hit tab after every one. And we're just going to save over that same file. We're going to reload. And boom. Now it's reloaded into our project. Go ahead and place some more notes to see where those uh, notes that we just added. So boom, boom. We're going to place a note here. 
and there you go those are those two notes we just added they're going to pop up there and like i said guys it's it comes in really handy because you can rename and they relabel themselves super easy and uh yeah again we can we can uh resize it over there with the nodes on the legend um something else that's really cool that i want want to keep in mind is that when placing the keynotes that they're they are connected to something like i was saying earlier I, we can connect them to almost anything except the annotation line i think so let me place a couple here on some of the equipment that i've placed and they'll actually be connected to that equipment so be careful when placing keynotes because you might accidentally place them on a background element and that background element may move or something and that keynote might disappear so as you can see watch i'm going to get rid of these delete these two uh pipes here and boom it renumbers and relabels my keynotes and another quick note that's cool let's say i've placed a bunch of keynotes and you know i I'm like, oh shoot, I need to change just this one keynote. I didn't want to put that there. And instead of having to delete it or add it another one, I can go over here, click on the keynote, come over to my properties box. There's the key value of it right there. I'm going to hit that little three, see that three little dot? And it brings back up my keynote files. And I can change that note itself. So see, I changed that note there, just that single note. So maybe if I placed a bunch of those, I can go and change you know highlight a bunch of them come over there and just change that real easily too so you guys can play around and utilize and see how you want to utilize them because you know you don't necessarily have to do it how i do it but this can't hurt your project it can only help what we did guys was just open a notepad we started labeling one through five Make sure you hit tab before every note that you want to add. You go up to your annotate tab. You load that TXT file in there and get to flying, baby. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the little tutorial video. Make sure you leave a comment below. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that bell. Hit that subscribe. If you want some more Revit tutorials, let me know what I could help you guys out with. I hope this user keynote video helped you guys out a little bit. Again, leave a comment below, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe. I'll be bringing you Revit content weekly. Thanks. It's the Revit Guru here, a.k.a. Revit Ryan. I'll see you guys next week.